एवरीवन दिस इज एफ सी पॉपकॉर्न आई मानो पबा चोपड़ा हेयर इज प्रत्यूष हेयर इज राहुल एंड वी आर ऑल गोइंग टू बी टॉकिंग अबाउट करण जोहर सिनेमा This episode of FC Popcorn is in association with Mubi, a curated streaming service showing exceptional films from around the globe. Get a whole month free at mubi.com/filmcompanion30. And I have to say this is kind of a historic moment because for the first time I feel like all three of us have agreed on a film which is Rocky or Rani ki prem kahani and all three of us have liked it. Yeah, <laughs> loved it. Loved it. Yeah, I have to say I had a great time and i thought ranveer was just outstanding he made me so happy like i wanted to go out on the streets and find <laughs> rocky <laughs> right yeah. what 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 was your reaction what was your first especially that first half for me was just bliss what did you guys feel so this is 25 years of karan johar absolutely as a filmmaker and so I think part of it, us as critics as we walk into films is also figuring out where does this film fall in its filmography, right? Is it a continuation? Is it a deviation? Uh is it a culmination in some sorts? Uh and so that is something that was going on in my head because there are so many of the Karan Johar isms that you could see in the film, right? Like the first half is so comedy heavy and the second half is so melodrama heavy, which is a thread that he's been pulling um since his first film. uh but then there's this one question which was nagging me so last week uh is working on a piece about the progressive swings of karan johar which you can find on filmcompanion.in good luck uh, <laughs> <laughs> so and and the, the thrust of it which i think even you agreed with um was that we often think of him as a conservative filmmaker but within that conservative idea of the family coming first he has pushed uh and made some very provocative statements uh and one of the so i was rereading his autobiography an unsuitable boy in which he he gave this very interesting anecdote which uh i think is very telling right before k3g released he went for the dil chahta hai premiere or some sort uh and he walked out of the film with this anxiety because he thought he was the cool filmmaker right he thought if he can dress shahrukh khan in dkny and polos and with a chain that says c o l literally spelling out cool um that he's a cool filmmaker but now suddenly he realized that coolness is not a glaze that you can put over a film right it must emanate from the very core of the cinema and so his movie suddenly the question of how do you make family cool and i think that is something that's haunted him or his filmography at least uh, for the 25 years to a point when edelay mushkil you don't even see the parents right i don't think you see the parents in that yeah. film yeah hmm. no yeah that there's that one dinner table scene with Ayan and his father, but yeah. the, you see the father's back, and that's it. You don't even know who he is. You don't even know who he is. Yeah. And so I, th- so when I was watching Rocky or Rani ki prem kahani, I was thinking um, very much about that, which is how is he trying to make the family cool? Um, I mean, that's something that we can talk about later, which is that his, I don't know if it's an anxiety, an obsession with wanting to be cool for the present and cool for the past. So there's this urge to be nostalgic. So to have both uh, Muhammad Rafi. and uh diljit dosanjh in the same musical landscape yeah right is that an anxiety or is that just it's who just he who he is yeah um that's something that was sort of throbbing through the film for me um i i always i mean the reason i enjoyed this film also first of all i'd forgotten that he was a director because it's been 7 or 8 years <laughs> since his last film not a short um, film you don't consider them i mean the <laughs> short films his were honestly his were my least favorite of uh, that those anthologies yeah, that is true. um but because he's always been on our screens you know whether he's doing coffee with karan whether he's hosting shows he's he's just he's omnipresent in ads, he's in he's everywhere designing jewelry what yeah yeah, yeah. he also designs occasionally you know so he's after, a restaurant also no now yes. right Yeah and and for someone like me who you know doesn't watch a lot of all of that uh, you tend to then start looking as the person as more of a producer who is nurturing you know this production house who's getting in fresh talent new filmmakers i've always admired the kind of filmmakers that has gotten in the last 10 years at least mm. um and i feel like a lot of what he's done there has influenced this film you know the kind of filmmakers he's gotten in the kind of writers the kind of people he's still hiring there uh, you know i'm not getting into the actors or the or, or, or the star kids that he's given a break and all that's a entirely different conversation but what he's been doing otherwise as a producer which 
I think he's been doing a very good job as a producer. I, I feel like that's finally shown uh, as a director how he's influenced him as a person and mm. how he's probably grown um, and gotten influenced by younger directors, by younger writers. Um, and we've been seeing this. Like, uh, and I find it very courageous when filmmakers do that, whether you're a mainstream filmmaker or you're an indie filmmaker. Um, it's not easy to do after a certain age. Mm. And uh, I always like it when filmmakers reflect back on their own on their own values, their own mistakes, maybe sometimes, uh, and say, you know, maybe I was young and I'm not going to disown that. That was who I was then. But this is me now. Mm. Um and I like that. Like I, I've always, I call it confessional cinema. I mentioned it a bunch of times in my reviews. And I've been seeing people in Hollywood do that. Director, the older director like Scorsese and Tarantino. I like it when they do that. I like the personal touch. Right? And even though this film may not look personal, as Pratush mentioned, the, the concept of family, the mm. way he's played within convention and, um, and the way he is basically shown his understanding of modernity say in the last 10 years as a producer mm. as um as say the uh, the person who's running an empire that can actually nurture these kind of values uh i, I think i saw a lot of that in this film and that's what won me over yeah yeah, yeah. but i would argue guys that he's always had that subversive streak yeah you know that mm. that what you were saying pratyush mm. and and uh, it's it's about sort of always of course aiming for the big, you know, bonanza blockbuster, right? All, that's mm. always been the aim. But within that and within the confines of being as mainstream as it comes, uh, he's always stuck in little, mm. little ideas that, but think about this, you know, think yeah. about that. Like, like, okay, Kanta Ben in Kal Ho Na Ho, however, she hasn't aged very well. I think she's aged very well. She's still funny. <laughs> she's very funny. Okay. She's very funny. And and maybe Dostana uh, yeah. was was not, you know, at that at that time. But at that time, to even address it, to say that, okay, here are two men who mm. are pretending to be gay. They're mm. pretending to be lovers. But even then to have in the a mainstream. Kiss. Yeah. And to have in a mainstream movie the idea that, okay, this is fine. Mm. And the mother is accepting of it. Mm. Which is such a lovely thing. So I feel like we've never, and he's always said this, that if my last name was Kashyap, you guys would take me more seriously. <laughs> you know, but maybe that's true. Right. The, one of my favorite anecdotes is, uh, so when he was filming Kabhi Alvida Na Kehna, uh, I think Aditya Chopra had called him and said, don't, like, don't shoot the sex scene. It'll, be, it'll work terribly against you. And even Rani Mukherjee was, uh, so there's Rani Mukherjee's husband, Abhishek Bachchan is sort of the perfect guy, but she's just not attracted to him. And Rani Mukherjee said, give me one scene at least, not to explain why I'm not attracted to him. And Karan Johar, like, he was just like, he said, no, he's, she's not sexually attracted to him. That should be enough. Yeah. I don't have to give a reason. How radical is that? Mm. And and I know people who sort of walked out saying, but it was good. Exactly. It was not good. You know, like, why would you not be in love with Abhishek? What, what was that? But to imagine that, no, a woman's desire matters. Mm -hmm. And I feel like he's always done that. Mm. Down to the, I don't know why you didn't like his last story short round. For me, it was <laughs> so funny. I've fallen off the chair laughing. Mm. And the fact that he could send up, ah. <laughs> really? I love that. Yeah. I just loved it. So, but there's also this, um, we have to talk about within... Rocky Rani Ki Prem Kahani, this idea that he starts off with this progressive idea, right? Of a woman who wants to assert herself. But throughout the film or towards the end of the film, we don't get a sense that after they marry, where are they going to live? Which is the question, which is where Tu Juti Mai Makar sort of fell off the wagon a little towards the mm. end, right? Because it was a film that was trying to do something in the last 10 minutes. It just didn't. And you, in your review, mentioned you didn't want to know, but yeah. you were just were hoping that the answer mm. was that. I don't know, the, the right one. So how do we make sense of the fact that he does come back to the family? He does come back to it. Is that an issue or is that... Because he's the guy who goes to Suraj Barjati after Hamaap Ke Haikon's premiere and says, you've made the best movie ever. He is also that person, right? Mm -hmm. uh, are we okay with that? Is that is that something so we I rankle with? It's also with? a new 
family no pratyush it's not the father is completely changed mm. the mother is changed mm. the sister is changed like it's their character arcs have gone through one through it, yeah. complete 24 mm. Uh, mm. you know and jaya bachan writes that letter with- and and jb <laughs> yeah which was actually for me she was the weak link she was the weak link mm. i felt like there was so they didn't care at all they mm. just made her into a male version of <laughs> mr b <laughs> a female version of mr b and just but let one her you can laugh at because we never laughed at raichand right no you did not but we mm. laughed at jaya bachchan you know yes. and like not they were very a, cruel to her yeah <laughs> they were cruel to her because in that scene where and this is a spoiler um uh, where shabana and dharmendra kiss when the cameras on jaya bachchan's face i wanted to see hurt but no, what but i saw was out. humor yeah, yeah it was comedy it and, was comedy and there's that tension which she does really well right between the emotion and the and the comedy but with her character i didn't know i felt like there was something very unstable there you know like of course she says the best line of the film which is the sajni gajni <laughs> <laughs> i, I laughed like line. a buffalo the person <laughs> me behind too, me like thought it. that something was wrong <laughs> me too i have just died i was like this is the best line ever yeah, <laughs> but rahul in your interview actually mentioned something which is that uh this is finally the storyteller becoming the story do you mm. want to talk a little bit about that yeah explain that yeah. more Uh, it's an extension of what i was saying right now basically because um because obviously we've been watching this film for 25 years and um uh, and i feel like in the last 4 or 5 years when he's not been directing as much uh, been more of a producer he's been in the discourse for whatever reason uh, good bad ugly um i feel like his films i i like the fact that his films the aesthetic has more or less remained the same he yeah. still stuck to his guns in a way mm. i feel like the india around the world around the way we watch films has changed in mm. the last two or three years that's why so many people were looking forward to a karan johar film this time i i know people who i wouldn't imagine i didn't imagine hearing that from them saying bahut ho gaya open i mean i need a karan johar film i was like but that says so much about yeah uh, what we've gone through in the last few years and how filmmakers sometimes by remaining the same also become progressive yeah mm. you know um, and that matters because uh, whether he's tried to say something progressive in this film or not uh, but just by being that very comfortable idea of karan johar that we mm. can go to at least watch ranveer look the way he does and alia look the way they do um, it says something uh, to not let the world around you influence you so much and then let uh go into this sort of spiral of self doubt saying i need to make different kinds of films and i feel like i saw a lot of him in this film i don't know him as a person but i'd like to know i'd like to imagine i know him as a professional and his journey so far because we've been part of that journey whether you know whether we like it or not and yeah. um and i keep looking for that in film that's what we talk about when we talk about integrity and honesty in movies mm. we talk about how much of yourself you want to give out mm. uh, whether as a professional or as a family person or as uh, or, or just uh, uh, as someone who thinks about movies and i feel like i saw a lot more of that in this movie basically saying that you know i i'm willing to learn from the people i have hired i am willing to learn from the people who watch my films and criticize my films and from the even from the people who love my films <laughs> Thank you.